God is awesome. Yes, he is. All the time. What a blessing God is to us. I thought I could we'd get a better amen than that. Amen. 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 God is awesome. There's a little section on this side is God is awesome, but I don't know about this side. <laughs> Sister Wright, he awesome? All right. I guess you say the right, but she's the only one that's going to say it on that side. And when I take my word for it, that God is certainly awesome. Yes, yes. What a marvelous, marvelous privilege it is to be in the house of the Lord. Oh, we are yes. certainly glad. Amen. I think it was Amen. David who said the one, I was glad Amen. when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. I don't know about you, but I, I deal with enough Stuff during the week yes, to, to be absent yes, from the house of the Lord. Amen. Well, I think we go through enough well, that we uh, we we should not be derelict in coming to the house of the Lord. Now, Amen. when you get to the house of the Lord, you can't get out what you fail to bring in. Amen. So if you don't bring anything Amen. to the house of the Lord, Amen. your praise, your hallelujah, your thank you, Jesus. Lord, I adore you, Father. Then you don't expect to get anything out of it. So you need to come to the house of the Lord with the expected attitude that God is going to speak to me. And watch this. And because God is going to speak something into my life, I'm going to give something back to you. Are y'all hear what I'm saying to you? All right, all right. Now, y'all ready to go to work? Well, before we do that, remember, our, our revival is coming up September the, um, 13th, 14th, and 15th. Um, now, the theme, the theme is refocus. Amen. Keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus. Amen. Watch this. Hashtag cross eyes. Mm. <laughs> Y'all something else, man. Has, hashtag cross eye. Not cross eye. Cross eye. Y'all, y'all, you know what I'm saying? Hey, that's, the, that's the thing, man. Fixing your eyes on. I knew that catch some of y'all. Some of y'all have just got you. But remember that. Remember our concert, the gospel concert, Straight Company will be here on that Saturday. So y'all listen, bring bring your, your joy. Yeah. Bring your bring your happy. I think the, somebody told me the last time Straight Company was in this building was 1982. Mm, uh. Long time. Long time, isn't that right? So they'll be here. Um, and so we pray that you come ready and excited to, to give God some praise and to hear a word from the Lord. J.K. Hamilton will be here. That's the husband of uh, Carol Hamilton, a uh, minister from the Mountain View Church of Christ in Tex in Dallas, Texas. Mm -hmm. And so let's be excited about that. Our teen empowerment is coming up. So get your teens uh, and your young people here and ready to go. We want to empower our teens and our young people. Also, make sure you keep in mind that uh, we are getting ready for our back to school um, giveaway. We'll be giving away some bags and some, some stuff, some supplies. But watch this. We're not just giving away bags. Mm -hmm. We're collecting the information. We're making relationships yeah. with people yeah. so yeah. that we can ultimately share the gospel with people. Amen. That's it. If yeah. you're passing out bags and that's all you've done, then that's all you've done. Yeah. But when you pass the bags out with the intent of making a connection with people so that we can save souls, that's what glorifies and honors God. Are y'all hear what I'm saying? And so that's what we're going to be doing. So you need to get your friends and family here, not just for a bag, but now to, to know more about Jesus. There might be some, some people who may be out there who just need you to pray for them. It's an avenue for us to make a connection. Are y'all hearing me? Y'all yeah. say it with me. Make a connection. Make a connection. That's what we're trying to do. Make a connection for Christ Jesus. All right, now let's go to work. Stand on your feet with me. Now this one it may take y'all a minute. Turn to 2 Samuel. Chapter 24. Some of y'all just go ahead and look at the table of contents. Second Samuel chapter 24. Yeah, Second Samuel chapter 24. That one we don't we hadn't called in called on for a while. And they, they have the phone. Y'all got it? Yeah, got it. Oh, okay. 
2 Samuel chapter 24, notice verse number 1. Now again the anger of the Lord burned against Israel and it excited David or moved David against them to say, Go number Israel and Judah. Now the king said to Joab, the commander of the army who was with him, Go about now through all the tribes of Israel from Dan to Beersheba and register the people that I may know the number of the people. Now, but Joab said to the king, Now, may the Lord your God add to the people a, a hundred times as many as they are, while the eyes of my Lord the king still see. But why do you, why, my Lord, does the king delight in this thing? Nevertheless, the king's word prevailed against Joab and against the commanders of the army. And so Joab and the commanders of the army went out from the presence of the king to register the people of Israel. Mm -hmm. mm, now, drop down to verse 10. Now, David's heart was troubled after he numbered the people. And so David said to the Lord, I have sinned greatly in, that I, in what I have done. But now, O oh Lord, please take away the iniquity of your servant, for I have acted very foolishly. And when David arose in the morning, the word of the Lord came to the prophet Gad, David's seer, saying, Go and speak to David, and thus the Lord says, I am offering you three things. In other words, choose your switch. <laughs> yeah. Choose for yourself one of them which I will do to you. Yeah. So Gad came to David and told him and said to him, Shall seven years of famine come to you or in your land? Or will you flee three months before your foes while they pursue you? Or shall there be three days pestilence in your land? Now consider and see what answer I will return to him who sent me. Mm, but verse 14. Then David said to Gad, I am in a great distress. Let us now fall into the hands of the Lord. For his mercies are great. But do not let me fall into the hands of man. Oh, man. Thank you. You may be seated. That's all right. I don't want to talk to you briefly. Right there from verse 14. I'd rather fall into the hands of God. Amen. Oh, my goodness. Now, uh, we, have been, we have launched our spiritual warfare series. And we have been looking at the strategy, the methods of Satan and how Satan attacks us. We've been, we've been carefully constructing and picking up on the game field. You remember I told you whenever you're dealing with your opponent, uh, uh, you've got to watch game film. You've got to know what he likes to do. You need to know what your opponent's strength is and you need to know how your opponent is going to attack you. Well, the same is true when it comes to us. Satan watches game film. He can't read minds. God can. Yeah. And so what he does is he uses various tactics and strategies to try to subvert your mind. Now, I need you to also understand and be reminded that the devil is really after your mind. Yeah. He does not care anything about the car you drive. He doesn't care anything about the house you live in. He doesn't care anything about the position you strive for on your job. What Satan is after is control of your mind. And if he can put a stronghold on your mind, and then he can control your behavior. He can control how you think. He can control how you live. He can control how you treat people. He can control the stuff you say out of your mouth. If you allow the devil to arrest your mind, well, then he will arrest you. And you will find yourself going about caring about the devil's will. Yeah, that's it. He's after your mind. Hear me now, remember, let's track and let's just rehash what we've already discussed. You remember in Genesis chapter 3, we saw what the devil did to Eve. He approached Eve and he's out from the outset. He attacks Eve's mind 
by attacking the character and the goodness of God. Did God really say you shouldn't eat of any tree in the Garden of Eden? And then he goes on, what's the weapon he uses? The target is her mind. The weapon he uses was lies and deceit or deception, right? God, you won't surely die. God just simply knows you'll be like him. And then what was his purpose? To make Eve ignorant of God's will. You remember that? Now when we get to Job, remember we looked at Job chapter 2. We ran the game film again on Satan. And what did we see? That Satan had a conversation with God. He told God, listen, uh, if you, uh, well God uh, really challenged the devil, he says, now have, where have you been? I've been everywhere, up and down the earth. And God says to jo uh, uh, the devil, he says, well, have you considered my servant, Job? There's none like him, upright, blameless, and a man that shuns evil at every turn. Then the devil says something interesting to God. He says, I would, but you've got this doggone edge around him. Yeah. Now, I need to remind you again, because here is your shout. Yeah. Why? How could the devil know that there was a hedge around him? Yeah. Chances are he had tried to get to him before and couldn't get to him. Isn't that right? Yeah. I need you to understand it. Let me say it to you again. You need to give God praise and thank you yeah. not just for, for the obstacles and the pitfalls that you could see, but yeah. you need to thank God for some arrows and some sharp knives that came your way that you didn't know anything about it. He said, I would, but you got this hedge around him. Why don't you, then, then the devil is so crafty, man. He says to God, why don't you do this? Strike him, you strike him. Right? And I guarantee you, he'll curse you to your faith. Oh, but then God says, well, I tell you what, I'll lower the hedge. Don't play with me, devil. I will lower the hedge because I need you to understand. I can only, I tell you what to do. You can't tell me what to do. I need you to know, devil, I'm in control, not you. Isn't that right? And so he, he, he says, well, lower the hedge, and I guarantee you I'll make you curse him to your, I'll make him curse you to your faith. Then you remember in chapter 2 what happened. He comes up with a crafty strategy. Now, he's still after Job's mind. Right? He still wants his mind, but now he's not going to come directly to Job the way he did Eve. What is he going to do? He took his family, he took his cattle, he took his wealth, he even took his servants. But then he says, well, since Job still maintains integrity, Edgar, what, the way I'm going to get it now, I'm going to attack his physical well-being. Yeah. Isn't that right? <clears throat> I'm going to attack his body. And then he made he, the Bible says he strikes Job from the head of his foot to the soles of his feet. Yeah. Now, what's the strategy? The strategy is to attack Job's body. What's the uh, what's the tar that's the target? What is the weapon he will use? Suffering. Mm -hmm. And then what's the purpose of all of this suffering? To make Job impatient with God's will. Are y'all still with me? Y'all still on the line? So what it is, when we go through suffering, when we go through trials and tribulations, what happens, he wants to, he wants to press down and bear down on you so much so that you become impatient with God's will, that you begin to make moves and maneuvers without God, and then you mess up your life. You, or you make the matter worse. That makes sense? Watch this. Now we get to another text, and we run the game film again, Sister Hazel. We're going to look at this old devil. Yeah. Now, what does the devil do here? Then he starts to mess with David, yeah. Israel's king. Israel's king. Uh, Second Samuel is a book that depicts the rise of David, the ascension of David as king. Uh, David becomes king, and it, it speaks of all of the glory of his kingdom and how David is a mighty king, a valiant king. But then it also, 2 Samuel, shows the pitfalls yeah. of David. That's yeah. what it does. It shows right. the pitfalls that David had some struggles. He was a great king, Kim. He was a, a matter of fact, remember the Bible says David was a man after God's own heart? Yeah. Right. Yet David had some struggles. David had some pitfalls. David took that man's wife, 
Bathsheba, isn't that right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And he he uh, he conjured up a plan to have her husband killed. And so David, then I tell you, anytime you live independent of God's will, you make a mess of your life. So he tried to hide and cover up stuff, conjured up a plan to have him killed in battle, but then God knew. God knew what was going on. Well, make a long story short, as David gets to the rise of his, his, his kingdom rule, he had battles after battles. The parallel scripture to 2 Samuel is 1 Chronicles chapter 21. And what you're going to find when you read it, you'll find that David and the Israelites had some battles with that fella named, you remember Goliath? Yeah, well, you do know Goliath had some relatives, right? Yeah, yeah. Some giants just like him. Matter of fact, he had some giants. He, he had a relative. That fella had Sister Hazel six, six fingers and six toes. Y'all yeah. think I'm playing with it. It's in the Bible. You see, if y'all don't read the Bible, I'm trying not to go there. But this fella was a bad dude, man. Now, you know what? run up on somebody with six fingers, six toes, and he. And he oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So he had some relatives. Well, each David and the Israelites struck down each one of those relatives. Mm -hmm. Isn't that right? Isn't it just like the devil? When you win a battle, he's gonna come back yeah, with something yeah, else. Yeah, yeah. He come back with another fight. He come back with another battle. He come back with another strategy. So they knock down all these giants. But then David gives a song of praise to God, and he honors God by how well. Uh, God has been to him, uh, how God has elevated his kingdom, how God has blessed him immensely. And we get to 2 Samuel 24. Yeah. And the Bible says the anger of God was moved that, it, that David took a census of the people. Yeah. Now, in order to understand this, you got to read 1 Chronicles 21. First Chronicles 21 tells you who got David, how David got in trouble. Right? Yeah. The text says it was the devil who incited David. He instigated, he put in, he enticed David to take the census. Now y'all know what a census is, don't you? You know that's taking account of the people, right? Well, only thing to run with this census is that this census was not a count of all the people. It was a count of just the army. Right. Which meant David was a king. Mm -hmm. He was a warrior, a fighting king, right? right? Which meant David was incited by the devil. Watch the target. The target is David's mind. <laughs> But what's, what a, but what's the strategy? Uh, I'm going to, you, well, what's the, the target is his mind. What is, what is the devil's uh, weapon of choice? Pride. Pride. Yeah. pride is what he's going to use. He, you, his weapon is pride. Now, remember, he doesn't, come, he doesn't want, the, David didn't trick into doing this like Eve was. He didn't use deception here. David knew better. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? He knew what would happen if he took the census. You got to remember in Exodus chapter 30, whenever the census was called, it was always commanded by God. Exodus chapter 30. Matter of fact, not only when you took the census, after it was commanded by God, God required that the men pay a ransom mm. for the temple or uh, for the sanctuary right. and as a ransom or a the monies for atonement. Mm -hmm. They had to do what God said, like God said, when God said it. At the command of God, the problem here, the devil gets into his mind and he incites him, lifts him up with pride that he conjures up the idea, let me see how great my army has got. That's what he said. Mm. Let me see, let me find out the number of men I have in this army. Mm. Yeah. What Gad had to tell him, David, why, 
not they joy. Why do you delight in such a thing? Don't you know it's God who gives you the increase of this up? It's God who will continue. You've got to be careful with, with, with the danger of pride. Yeah. Because what pride will do, pride will cause you to be arrogant. Yeah. And then it will cause you to, to, to think so high-minded that you won't listen to anybody. Watch this, watch this. Here is Joab, one of his, 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 his men in the army, one of his captains, and he wouldn't even listen to Joab. Now you know this is bad, Edgar, because Joab wasn't the most godly man. No, he wasn't. Now Joab had some issues. Matter of fact, Joab didn't stop him when he took Bathsheba. Joab, if, if, if it served Joab's purpose, anything went. But isn't it interesting that an ungodly man like Joab gets to this point, realizes, David, you're about to mess up something. And he even tries to warn David. Yeah. But he doesn't listen. No. Pride is dangerous, you Pride is a wicked evil. Yeah. That if you allow it to conjure up in your mind, man, you'll be pride, you, you'll be conceited. Not just arrogant, but conceited. Let me, let me read to y'all. Y'all got a minute? Yeah. Let me tell y'all what pride. Pride. Pride is a unwarranted and an unhealthy attitude of confidence. Yep. Yeah. It's an elevated view of oneself and one's ability. Mm -hmm. Now we got two things at play here. David's pride, I'm sorry, and David's will. That's his target. Is mine, yes, but the real target is David's will. Now, what's the will? You mean, so I don't forget this. The will, human will, is the capacity for choice and action which we can exercise for good or evil. That's right. It is our own human capacity to choose responsibly. So what is the devil after? What's his target? David's will. Why? Because he wants to attack and, 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 and prohibit David from making the wise choice of choosing God yeah. over him. Yeah. Are y'all seeing this? Yeah. That's, it. That's the will. That's the human will. Now I need you to also understand God has a will. That will is for us to be transformed to the image of his son. God has a will that all men will be saved. God has a will that the church will actually manifest and speak and proclaim the riches and excellences of God's salvation. Amen. God has a will. But do you not know the devil has a will? Yeah. 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 Pull up, Travis, pull up 2 Timothy chapter 2. I think it's 2 Timothy chapter 2. I need y'all to watch. I need y'all to pay, put your eyeball on this thing. We'll come back to pride in a moment, Travis. I'm sorry. But yeah, yeah, 2 Timothy. Uh, go, go on, drop down to verse uh, 4. Is that right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh huh. No, no, no soldier in service entangle himself in the affairs of this life that he may please him who enrolled him. And that is God's will, that as a soldier that's put in the service of the Lord, your goal and your life's journey is that you may please the very one who enlisted you as a soldier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Next verse. And if also a man contend in the games, he is not crowded except he have contended lawfully. Mm -hmm. The husbandman that labors must be the first to partake of his fruit. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 25 and 26, Travis. I think that's the one. But that was still good, y'all. Even though I gave you the wrong scripture, that was good. Right. <laughs> You're still a soldier. Man. Yes, amen. So y'all ready to put me out in the church because I gave you the wrong scripture? <laughs> oh, my God. I think it's 1 Timothy 2. Look at verse 26, Travis. 25. There's no 26? Then I was right in 2 Timothy. I knew it. 
Amen. It's 2 Timothy 25. We just didn't get there. See how, see what impatience gets you? Well, 2 Timothy. Now y'all looking at me like I'm really messed up. <laughs> look, at, look at verse 20, 25, Travis. Now I know there's a 26 in there, right? Yeah. Uh, 26 is the one you want. Yeah, yeah, that's what I got to back up. And Nick is correcting them back up to 24. Yeah, 24. Yeah, and, and the Lord's servant, the Lord's servant must not strive, but be gentle towards all, apt to teach. He's looking at these, these characteristics of God's leader, forbearing, mm -hmm. in meekness, correcting them that oppose themselves, if peradventure God may give them repentance unto the knowledge of truth, and that they may recover themselves, watch this, out of the snare of the devil, having been taken by him and his will. Now, what's the point? Satan has a will. Just as sure as God has a will, the devil has a will. And when he, when he knows that God, you have a will, you have the God-given capacity to do right or to do wrong. Well, what does he want to do? He wants to exploit your will to do wrong. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. He wants to entice your will to do evil. Are you yeah. hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. And anytime you do evil, you are or anytime you do you you engage in sin and you practice sin, you are carrying out the devil's will. Okay. Can I show you another one? Yeah. John chapter 8, verse 44. Now I know this is the right one. <laughs> John chapter 8, verse 44. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And, uh, now look at what Jesus says to, to these folk in John 8. He says, now you are of your father. The devil. The devil. Yeah. And the lust of your father, it is your what? Will. Yeah. yeah. Don't miss that. He says, you are just like your dad. <laughs> the devil. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm about to say something but my mom was sitting back there. <laughs> I'm about to tell y'all that when I used to get on her nerves, her very last nerve. <laughs> she would say, you acting just like the devil. <laughs> I'm about to, I'm about to, no, I better not do that. Oh, Lord, have mercy. You, <laughs> you are of your father, the devil. She sometimes would say, you acting just like your daddy. The other daddy. <laughs> All right, done. Okay, come on, come on. The, you are the father, the devil. Now notice, he says, and the lust of your father, the devil, he says, it's your will to do it. You see that? Then he says, he was a murderer from the beginning and standeth not in truth because there is no truth in him. So when he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own. For he is a liar and the father thereof. What's the point? The devil has a will. Yeah. What you got to be mindful of is that you ain't carrying out his will. Amen. Right. Yeah. Amen. You have to make sure you want to When you speak evil, when you assassinate people's character, yeah. when you get in a room of gossip, guess what you're doing? Carrying out his will. When you start to dislike people to a point where you hate people, you're carrying out his will. When you speak ill of somebody, you may not have commit murder physically. But you are committing it of burden. Yes. You follow what I'm saying? Yes, yeah. You got to be careful that you are not carrying out his will. Yes. What happened to David? Poor fella, he ended up carrying out the devil's will. Yes. Now, notice in the devil, all it was was to get David in trouble. What he wanted was to incite David through God, wanted to incite God through David to destroy Israel. Mm -hmm. Now get pride. Can we get to we look at pride a little bit? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Look, look at this unhealthy view of oneself. Pride. Look at how the Bible describes pride. When pride cometh, then cometh what? Shame. But with the lowly is wisdom. Yes. Wisdom. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Pride goes before what? Destruction. And a haughty spirit before a fall. In other words, a prideful person will fall. Yes. Right. And a prideful person will meet its own, his or her own destruction. Yeah. All right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before, uh -huh. But before destruction, the heart of a man is haughty 
And before honor, he goes to he goes in humility. Mm, look at that. What's the next? Did I give you another one, Travis? No. Did that come at all? Oh, now I need you to look at another film strip of the devil. Now, in Ezekiel chapter 28, this text is not directly talking about the devil. But the language that Ezekiel uses describes some of the devil. Yeah. What is he talking about? He's giving warning to the king of Tyre. Mm -hmm. He's getting ready to destroy the king, bring him low. But, the, when, but in bringing the king of Tyre low, he describes him as the devil personified. Mm. Watch this. More of the word of Jehovah came to be saying, saying what? Son of man, take up a lamentation over the king of Tyre and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord Jehovah, thou sealest up the son full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou had thou was king. Now the king of Tyre wasn't in Eden. Mm -hmm. If it was, that's a whole king. Yeah. <laughs> he, 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 thou was in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, sardis, topaz, diamond, beryl, onyx, jasper, sapphire, emerald, and the car carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tablets and of thy pipes was in thee, and in the day thou was created, they were pre prepared. Watch this, watch this. Thou was the anointed cherub. No man is a cherub. Right. That covered, and I set thee so that thou was upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Uh huh. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created, till unrighteousness was found in thee. Yeah. By the abundance of the of thy traffic, they fill the midst of thee with violence. Thou hast sinned. Therefore, I cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God. I have destroyed thee, O, co o covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thy heart was lifted up. There it is, y'all. Thy heart was lifted up because of your beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I have cast thee to the ground. And I have laid thee before kings that they may behold thee. What was the devil's problem? Pride. Right. And he personifies the devil by describing the king of Tyre. Mm -hmm. Now we get to David, and David is incited by a devil who's full of pride. Yes, sir. He wanted to look at the language. He, he wanted to be like God. He wanted to be where God is. Notice the lie he tells Eve. You, the day you eat of it, God knows you'll be like that. That's the lie. Y'all catching this thing? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What? Now, what is inherent in the lie? Pride. You will be just like him. What's inherent in Job's life? If you forsake me and get impatient with God's will, then your pride will take over and you'll forsake God. Are y'all, and is all this making sense? Yeah. All right, now let's get back to 2 Samuel. I'm almost done. I know I took a while. Y'all looking mad at me because y'all think I'm going to go over time. No, go ahead. So he incites. Now watch this, y'all. Satan the adversary, adversary targets David's will. All right? His ability to choose right from wrong. His weapon is pride. Now, yes, oh, now notice, y'all, notice. His purpose, his purpose was to make David live independently of God's will. Mm -hmm. Y'all catching that? Yes, Watch it now. That was his whole purpose, was to make David live independent. You, David, are your own boss. You, David, are your own king. You, David, call your own shots. You, David, give, uh, 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 make uh, things come and go. You, king, are the one who is the shot caller and the mover and the shaker of life. You, David, are the one who's really on the throne. He's messing with his mind by messing with his pride. And then, as David, as David takes the senses, mm -hmm. watch what happens. 
Now, verse 10, David's heart was troubled, had troubled him after he numbered the people. You ever, you ever had some advice not to do something? Don't do this. Don't go there. Don't hang with this person. Don't do that. And then you do it anyway. And all of a sudden, your conscience strikes you. Now, let me just suggest to you something. The moment you engage in wrongdoing and your conscience doesn't strike you, you are treading on dangerous ground. Yes. 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 Let me do you one better. The moment you contemplate engaging in wrongdoing and it doesn't bother your conscience, you are on dangerous ground. Yes. John, you know what I'm yes. Now, David, this thing hit him afterward, man. Oh, it hit him afterward. Now, now watch this. He numbered the people, so David said, The Lord, I have sinned greatly in that I have in what I've done. But now, Lord, please take away the iniquity. Now God is going to do just that. He's going to take away the iniquity, yeah. but the consequences will still be there. Yeah. 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 Seventy thousand men will die. Yeah. Yeah. Watch this, watch this, watch this. When David arose in the morning, the word of the Lord came to the prophet Gad, saying, uh, to David's seer, saying, Go speak to David, thus says the Lord. I'm offering you, offering you three things. Choose for yourself one of them which I will do. Well, that's something God said, go pick a switch. <laughs> now, I, now, my mother used to tell me, go out there and pick me. And then I, and then I used to take the road of less travel. I used to try to take, or should I say, the, the road of least resistance. Yeah. And I go pick the smallest branch, one that I knew by the time she hit me one time, it's going to tear up. Only to find out she had already had a switch. Y'all ain't got no old school mama like that. Only to find out she had either a switch or a shoe. And then God said, now you choose, David. You choose which punishment I'll give you. Yep. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Uh, he said, shall it be seven years of famine? Will you flee three months before your foes? Or will it be three days of pestilence? Now, if God had already said in Exodus 30, if somebody took a census that when he, he did command it, yeah. pestilence would come. Yeah, he did. Watch this now. David has enough sense in all of this to respond correctly. Number one, he acknowledges it now. We see the strategy of the devil. Now I want you to see the salvation of God. Watch this now. Yeah. David said to Gad, I'm in a great distress. Let us fall into the hands of the Lord for his mercy are great. Yes. Are y'all hearing me? Yeah. Listen, you got to know who to go to when you get in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. You got to know who to call on when you put your own self in a pickle. Yeah. Are y'all hearing me? He says, Lord, I'd rather fall into your hands, watch it, because your mercies are great. Yeah. Ah, okay, okay. The Lord sent a pestilence at the appointed time. And now watch verse 16. When the angel stretched out his hand. Now, in, in First Chronicles, the angel goes before God and he kills and he strikes the man. Amen. Now, in this text, He's, it, the, the, the uh, Samuel picks up, Second Samuel picks up where the angel has his sword out and he's getting ready to destroy Jerusalem. The, the Israelites that are in the city of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. But watch the mercy of God. Mm -hmm. He says, <laughs> when the angel stretched out his hand, verse 16, towards Jerusalem to destroy it, the Lord relented from the calamity and said to the angel who destroyed the people, it's enough. Mm -hmm. Now relax your hand, and the angel of the Lord was by the threshing floor of Aaron. Now, I'm about to get excited. Yes. David says, Lord, here's what I choose. I choose you because your mercies are great, not that I fall into the hands of man. Then he looks up, he sees the angel with his sword getting ready to hit Jerusalem, but then he, the angel, did you catch where the angel was? Mm -hmm. He is at the threshing floor yeah. of Arana. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the chapter side. Oh, God, the Holy Word. He's at the threshing floor of Arana. 
God about to strike Jerusalem. This is the same place. Now, let me just fast forward. He then speaks to the, the king, the man who owned the land. David goes to him and he says, now, sir, I need to, he, he speaks to the Jebusite. He says, I need to buy this land from you because I need, because what happened, the, the prophet tells David, you need to go offer, build an altar, offer the sacrifice so that the, the plague will be averted. Well, he goes to Arnon. Yeah. Uh, and he talks with the Jebusite. He says, I need to buy this land. But the Jebusite was willing to give him the land. Yes, he right. says, no, I will not accept this without cost. Yeah. Catch it. It cost David to buy that land yes, in Arana. Now, it don't mean much to you until I tell you what, how insignificant are the place of Arana was. This is the same place where Solomon was given the command of God to build his temple. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same place, y'all, where David was commanded to build an altar for the sacrifice that would appease the wrath of God. Yeah. It's the same place where Abraham yeah. offered Isaac as a sacrifice. Right. And God stopped his hand right before and found a ram caught in the thicket. Arana is equivalent to Mount Moriah. Yeah. It's the same place where Jesus was offered on the cross of Calvary. Are y'all hearing me? It's the place called Arana, which is equivalent to Mount Moriah. It's the same place where Jesus was offered, that same place where David had to offer the sacrifice, the same place where Solomon would build his temple. It's the same place where Abraham was to offer Isaac. What is God doing? I'm showing you a picture of my salvation where my justice will meet head on with my mercy. And watch this. It cost Jesus his life. Yes. <laughs> oh, oh y'all ain't. Yeah. Man. <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy. I get all that. And y'all get it. That's all right. The altar, the altar, y'all. It's the altar. Now, watch this. David says, David says, Lord, tell me what I need to do. Yeah. Build the altar. Because you need to now worship him. He acknowledges his sin, right? Yes, After 70,000 men died, he acknowledges his sin. Now watch what David does. When he sees that angel striking down those people, he says, wait a minute, Lord. He says, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I didn't do, he says, the people didn't do anything to you. I did. Yes. It's my sin yes, sir. That, caused this, that caused this destruction. Take your wrath yeah. and put it on me. On me. On me. Yes. Oh, yes. oh man, I don't need this water right now. <laughs> Take your wrath and avert it, Lord, to me. Yes, yes, sir. The yes. difference with David and Jesus, David sinned yes. and tried to intercede for the people. Yes. But Jesus, at the place called Arana, Mount Calvary, Mount Moriah said, Lord, I'm innocent, but I still want you to put their sins on my account. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's going to cost me my blood. Y'all yeah. ain't catching me. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh, listen, I don't know about you, but I'm glad Jesus interceded for me yeah. and took my place and said, I will die for Fred. I'll die for Angela. I'll die for Kill. I'll die for Edgar. I'll die for all humanity because it's going to cost me the precious blood that will wash away all sin. That's it. Yes. All right. Amen. Now, dude, can I tell you something else? He does this even though David sinned. Yes. 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 Greatly. Yes. They did. Uh, you, you measure up the sin. Mm -hmm. In your life, God can do better. Yes. 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 See, that's the blessing, y'all. That's the blessing about yes. calling yes. your church family home yes. 
See, because when, when, when you think of your home, your home is a place where you can go back to. Yeah. Right. You leave and go to work, you come back home. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's, just, that's, just, that's the same thing with God. Right? That's the same thing with that prodigal son. You leave. God, though, is gracious enough, yeah. merciful enough yeah. to bring you back home. Amen. Amen. Yes. A matter of fact, why would you call it home if you can't come back? Yeah. Yeah. Right? God, man, y'all making me work hard here. Oh, Jesus. He says, listen, David intercedes for the people. Mm -hmm. To avert God's justice and wrath. Yeah. Jesus intercedes for us the same way. Right. Now, I just got a couple of scriptures and I promise you I'm done. Can y'all bear with me? Yes, sir. Because yeah. I done got excited and I got to show this to you. I need you to look at Hebrews. Get Hebrews, Travis. What's the first one I gave you? Was it Hebrews chapter 2? I think it is. Start at verse, look at verse 14, y'all. Hebrews chapter 2. Since then, the children are sharers in flesh and blood. He, Jesus, himself in like manner took part of the same that through death mm -hmm. he, Jesus, might right. break to not yeah. him that had the power of death, yeah. that is yeah. the devil, yeah. now, and might deliver all them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to the body. What was one of the powers controls that the devil had? Death. Yeah, that's right. Watch this, watch this. For verily not to angels does he give help, but he gives help to the seed of Abraham. Of Abraham. Uh -huh. Wherefore it behooved him and all things to be made like his brother. In other words, it, God saw fit to make Jesus, to clothe Jesus in human flesh, to be like his brother. Watch his wife. That he might be a merciful and faithful what? What do high priests do? They intercede on behalf of Israel. And in things pertaining to God, watch it to make propitiation for the sin. So now the Hebrew writer says, Jesus was clothed in human flesh. Jesus was made a high priest to intercede for us. And it took place when he became an offering for yes. us. Yes. Amen. That's it. Oh, what's the other one, y'all? Real quick, y'all. I got to get it to you. Real quick, what's the next, what's the next one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, no. What is the next Hebrew verse I gave you? Scripture I gave you. But now, watch this. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Roman, I did give you Romans 3. But now, apart from the law, a righteousness of God has been manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Uh -huh. Even the righteousness of God, through faith in Jesus Christ, unto all them that believe. For there is no, no. distinction. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. For all have yeah. sinned. In the Greek, it really translates, oh, yeah. for all yeah. are sinning and all are falling short. Watch it, watch it, watch it. Uh-huh. Become short of the glory of God. Being justified. Feed freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God set forth to be a sin offering, a propitiation, a satisfaction of God's divine justice. He set Jesus to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. Watch it. To show his righteousness because of the passing of the sins done aforetime in the forbearance of God. Now, another translation says God publicly mm. displayed. displayed Jesus yes. to be a propitiation yes. for our sin. Now, let's connect the dots. When did God publicly display Jesus? Display Jesus as a propitiation. It was on Mount Moriah. Yeah, which is Calvary. Which is the place called Orana. It was there. God set him up. To be a propitiation. Where? On Mount Calvary. Yeah. Mount Moriah. Place called Orana. Well what place is that Fred? That's the same place that he told Solomon he'd build a temple. 
same place David was commanded to give that altar, uh, that build that altar and offer sacrifices. Same place Abraham was to offer uh, Isaac as a sacrifice. He says God publicly displayed him as our propitiation. Yes. Amen. Oh my goodness. What a and then his, the show now, and it was for God to show his righteousness. Because of the passing over of the sins done for time. Ooh, for sure, for the showing, I say, of his righteousness at right. this present season, that he might himself be just yes. and the justified yeah. of yeah. him that have faith in Jesus. Yeah. Yes. Amen. What are you having faith in? The same Jesus that was offered on the place called Mount Moriah. It is. Same Jesus, faith in the same Jesus. Uh -huh, who gave himself as a propitiation. I love what Paul would say. Paul said it this way. Him who knew no sin was made to be sin so that we might become the righteousness of God. That's 2 Corinthians 5, 21. All oh, goodness, y'all. In spite of what David did, God still showed mercy. Even though the devil got the best of him, lifted him up with pride, God still showed him mercy. Even though he disobeyed a, a command of God that he knew was wrong, yeah. God still gave him mercy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Matter of fact, and, and watch this, and even David knew that what I need to do right now is acknowledge my sin. Yeah, yeah he did. See, our biggest roadblock many times in the people, mm. it, it isn't some external circumstances. Nope. Our biggest roadblock is ourselves. Amen. Mm -hmm. And what happens, we refuse to acknowledge yeah. to God. I said, you ain't acknowledging to me, mm -hmm. but you're acknowledging to God. This is why I love David says, uh, it's, I'd rather fall into the hands of God than man. Amen. Because see, what happens when you come down here and you say, brothers and sisters, I've sinned, and you, you repent to the people. That's right. right. But now when you walk out of here, the people will still judge you. That's right. right. Yeah. The people will still hold some level of condemnation. What you had better do is acknowledge God. Yes. Yes. Amen. God, I got a problem. Yes. Yeah. As a matter of fact, God, I'm such a problem that I believe I need to be covered by your son's blood. Because the moment I leave out of here, I might have the propensity to come up with what I, to, to actually act out what I had planned in my mind. So y'all try it now, y'all trying to get over there. Sanctify it again. That's it, yo. Lord, listen, I need to be covered. I need you right now. I'm acknowledging that I'm weak because there are some temptations that are outside this door that I know I might fool around and engage in. Amen. I, Lord, I'm, I'm, I need you right now. Yes. Right? And, and God is not the The moment you say that's not me, that's pride. That's mm -hmm. pride. The moment you start to say, uh, I would never do that, that's pride. That's pride. And, and God, is, God is saying, yeah, what you need to do, friend, build an altar. Mm. Yeah. It's time you need to get back to worshiping me. Yeah. Right? David had to build that altar. Then, then watch this. And not only did David have to build the altar, David had to sacrifice. Yeah. 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 What does God want you to do? I beg you, brothers, by the mercies of God, that you present yourself, your body, as a living sacrifice. Listen, living for God is a sacrifice. Yeah. 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 Isn't that right? Yeah. Living for God means you got to cut out some stuff, yeah. put to death some stuff, get rid yeah. of some stuff, and even possibly get rid of some people. Yeah. 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 But either way you cut it, it's going to require a sacrifice. Yeah. It's going to require a sacrifice. Yeah. David had to worship, he had to sacrifice, and that sacrifice came with a price. Yes, yeah. yeah, yeah. Listen, you, we got to get back to worship. We got to really worship God. We got to really yeah. seek yeah. the yeah. Lord. Yeah. And then put to death some stuff that you know is hindering you from yeah. getting to God. And then, don't you buy into the devil's lie that because you messed up a time or two, that God is through with you. Can't do that. No, that's, that would be us. Yeah. We, we easily get through with each other. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's why David said, I'd rather fall in the hand of God than man. Because God is going to forgive me. God is going to keep me. Right? Yeah, you can't look to people. No, you got to come to God. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You got to acknowledge it. Right? And then you got to acknowledge that God is faithful enough to cleanse you. Amen. You got you to acknowledge that. Because sometimes we get so guilt ridden in our life and the mistakes we make that we don't, we start to think God can't cleanse me. God can't forgive me. Or God won't forgive me. And that's the devil's lie. Yeah, man. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yes, sir. All right, now, what, what, what's the strategy? What's the strategy? What, what is he, what's the target? He wants to, he wants to, uh, he wants to invade your mind. I'm getting this mixed up. But what's the, what's the purpose? To make you independent of God's will, right? Hey. Yeah, that's what he wants. He wants you to live independent of God. Don't listen to God. Don't do what God wants you to do. You're your own man. You're your own woman. Well, well what's, what's, what's he's after? He's his weapon of choice, his pride. Yeah. Then what is he attacking then? Your will. Your will, that's it. You hear mm -hmm. what I'm saying? He's attacking your will. Now, I'm going to put this down so y'all will know for sure, for sure I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> Watch this. There's somebody who's not a child of God. He's attacking your will right now. Yes, sir. You've been coming. You've been, you, somebody's even been studying with you, sharing the good news of God, and you have still been rejecting. What he's attacking is your will. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Your will, the, the will that God's given you is to do the right thing. Yeah. Yeah. Obey the gospel. Isn't that right? Yeah. Yeah. What, is, what, what is he attacking? Your will. You don't need that gospel, sir. You don't need that Christianity stuff. Uh -huh. You've been doing all right by yourself without it. Yeah. Yeah. He's attacking your will. What, are you, what does God want you to do? He wants you to submit to his son yeah. who is greater than the devil. Amen. He wants you to submit to his son. He wants you to come by faith to him. Repent, turn. And I know that, that's a thing we often don't talk about anymore, but repentance is a daily walk of the day. Amen. Hey, boy, ain't, ain't just you coming down here, brother and sister, I repent. What does that mean? See, that's a report. Repentance says I'm changing Change. my life, my mind, my will, and I'm submitting it to God. That's repentance. Because repent. yeah. I can sit down, I can come down here and report to you, brothers and sisters, that I repent, but then walk right out of here and continue to do what I'm doing. That ain't repentance. Repentance shows a change of your life. Amen. Are y'all hear what I'm saying? Yes. That's repentance. Yes, and then confess that Jesus is Lord. Be baptized. Be immersed for the forgiveness of your sin. Yes. And then for someone who's a child of God and the devil has been attacking you, well, what you need, you need an intercessor. Yes. Right? Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah, you need that one who intercedes for you. You need that one who, who right. intercedes, uh, who, who does it on the, on the, who, who got up on, on that cross on Mount Moriah. Yeah. You need him yeah. to intercede for you. You need prayer. He, the whole reason he died, one of the reasons he died, was so he could be a faithful and merciful high priest. Yes. High priest. Yep. Amen. But now pride will keep you from coming to him. Yeah. Pride will keep you from saying, you know what, I don't need yep. prayer right now. I don't need strength. I don't need deliverance. Yep. Prayer will make you sit right there yeah. and yeah. hold your chest out Mercy. like you got it all together. Huh. That's what pride will do. All right, y'all ready to pray? It's praying time now. All right, you ready? You, you ready, Kim? God sent his son. Down. 